Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Adam Claremont for BreakingAudio.com and AdamClaremont.com. Today I've got another video for you that's going to dive into Isotope, showing you how we do a little bit of audio restoration. And also I'm gonna sort of describe the situation specific to this audiobook uh, that I recorded. Wasn't planning on editing, but uh, after an interesting turn of events, here we go, and I'm solving a problem and making a happy client. So if you like videos about checking out Pro Tools tips, Ableton tips, audio engineering tips, be sure to hit the bell and subscribe because at Breaking Audio, this is exactly what you'll get every single week. So without further ado, let's dive in to the video. A little backstory here. I'd recorded this audiobook for a client. Uh, it was determined ahead of time that uh, our rates kind of exceeded their budget for the editing. So I would be done after the recording process. So we did all that and uh, I got a phone call um, with an upset client basically saying that the editor that she did hire was claiming that the entire book needed to be re-recorded. Um, it was a mess, sounded like it was recorded in a bathroom. Um, I should be fired. Uh, I should give all the money back. Um, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. Um, at which point I was upset to hear that obviously, but I, I, I was kind of smiling a little bit in the back of my mind because I know that uh, none of that is true. Um, but anyway, basically what ended up happening is, you know, this client fortunately went for um, somebody on the cheaper side of the spectrum and that person received the audio and decided that anything that had a little bit of noise um, should be re-recorded rather than fixed. Um, any problems should not be solved by that person. They should be resolved by bringing the talent back in and hiring me again to re-record, which to me goes against everything I'm all about. With audiobooks, there's always pickups. There's always problems you need to fix. There's always re-records. But I think that should be the last option, the last resort. Uh, I think it's part of our job to clean up and uh, we should be resourceful and have the tools and have the experience and the expertise to be able to do that cleanup. So they gave me a list of 500 plus pickups. Now this is a 12 hour plus finished audiobook, which is, you know, kind of average, but 500 pickups is quite a lot. So I talked with this client, was really calm and just sort of explained like, well, I'm not going to re-record this for free because I know what I was, <laughs> what I, I know the value of the work I gave you. It clearly does not need to be re-recorded. So why don't you let me edit the book? I'll do it for whatever they were doing. I'm just trying to solve a problem here. That's kind of as far as I was willing to go. And it was honestly probably more generous than I needed to be. But again, I subscribe to being a problem solver, not a finger pointer. So I'm trying to help out this person and build more goodwill, which I did. So I took over the audiobook. I took a look at these cues. And honestly, I'm just kind of wiping out almost all of their notes because they're really kind of simple fixes. So one of the first things I wanna show you as I dive into Pro Tools here, is here's a little bit of the audio we recorded. I have lost and found myself many times in the wonderful worlds created by Madeline Lingle. So that sounds fine, but here was a problem with um, this line right here. Time and Madeline Lingle. So this was, uh, like, this is a common note that I have, you see all this background noise, background noise, background noise, over and over and over and over and over again. So our talent is the author. He is also a little elderly and he has a problem with his knee. We went through several chairs and pillows trying our best to make him comfortable, it just was not working out well. He was a little shifty. So, you know, I did my best to accommodate him and make him feel good. And it is very important to have the author read um, whenever possible. And if you hear his voice, I think he's got a pretty cool voice. I have lost and found myself many times. All right. I mean, how do you replace that? So the decision was made that he would narrate the book. And sorry, but this is kind of what we had to deal with sometimes. Time and Madeline Lingle. But I'm not going to bring him back here to do 500 plus pickups uh, because he was uncomfortable and because someone else decided not to do uh, a little bit of audio restoration. So what are we going to do? We're going to highlight this clip open up audio suite and send it into rx go to rx connect send okay so here we are in rx time and madeline lingle I so it's kind of ugly but this is honestly guys this is such a simple fix dialogue isolate 
I'm going to be really aggressive. Check this out. Time and Madeline Lengel. Now, come on. Now, why would I bring back a talent into the studio for hundreds of pickups when I can do this in literally less than a minute? That's insane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, person who just lost an editing job and a client probably forever for creating a problem that wasn't one ever. Now, let's listen to it now. Time and Madeline Lengel. I have lost and found myself many times. All right. So as you can see, I'm a little fired up right now. You know, I'm proud to be kicking some ass on this and fixing these problems um, because it's well within my ability. It's well within your ability. Um, it's well within the ability of the person who had this job to begin with, um, but I think this comes down to servicing clients and the philosophy behind doing that. And I would encourage you to, one, don't be taken advantage of by other people who maybe don't have the same experience as you or maybe just don't have that philosophy of solving problems. They would maybe rather kick off the work to someone else or maybe maybe they're upset because they did not get a very great rate they did not negotiate well for themselves, and now they don't believe that the work that is needed to be done does not fit within that rate. So maybe they're upset because, again, they negotiated against themselves. To that I say, do better negotiating next time. Uh, the reason that I did not get this editing job to begin with was because my rate was higher than this other person's. Also, if you choose to accept the work, I think you need to actually do the work. So there's that part, too. Solve problems. This is a problem. Yeah. Solve it. Don't put it back on your client. Um, they lost a job because of this. They're just not problem solvers. And it's not even about this job. It's about what about the next one and the next one after that and the next one after that. Who are they going to call? Probably me now, you know, because I, not only did I solve this problem, but I took care of and I erased this whole issue of bringing in the talent and scheduling all these extra hours for unnecessary work. That helps my narrator, that builds a good relationship with him, and that helps uh, the publishing company, you know, so who does a lot of books, by the way. So I'm happy to be on their good side. And then I guess the last thing that I would say is careful pointing fingers at other people downstream or upstream, wherever. You can be upset with someone. You can, you know, maybe have a, an opinion about the quality of someone else's work. You might want to think twice about pointing fingers and pushing the blame onto someone else especially to your client, without having maybe an open conversation. We could have talked about this ahead of time, and we probably could have saved some face for, for them. Uh, they're just not looking very good right now. You can see how simple this was to fix. Um, so there you have it. So now, now you can see, you know, hop in Isotope. You can actually clean up this dialogue pretty well with those types of things with Isotope. So I wanted to show you that, but also I just kind of wanted to put that in your brain about, you know, if you ever have been in a situation where you're getting a, a project that maybe isn't as, as ideal as you're hoping it would be, um, think about solving problems. It doesn't just fix the job you're on. It can actually get you work the next time because we're in the service industry here. We're here to provide valuable expertise and make everyone else's life easier, period. So anyway, that, that's my take on this. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you also are, are interested in more audio restoration tips, uh, check out the video uh, right over here uh, because I showed you some other ones that were pretty cool there too, also solving a problem. Um, so that's it again, Adam Claremont for breakingaudio.com, adamclaremont.com. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. Every week you'll get more videos just like this, and I will see you on the next one.